Okay, welcome to part 14 of this series. In this video, I'm going to go over one thing that I should have covered in the last part, but kind of run out of time to, and then hopefully we're going to get on to um, letting people add messages. Okay, so the thing that I didn't mention last time is that once you've loaded this page, these messages should no longer be marked as unread. So when I reload this page, that shouldn't be unread, because I've seen it already. Um, so the way we do this is by updating the conversations last view column in the table which is, starts off as zero we set it to the current time every time this page loads so we can do that um, however there is a slight problem which I'll mention once, uh, once we get on to the next part which is adding messages so what we're going to do is create a function to update the conversation last view time um, so let's just go to our file and create that here I'm just going to do it under the fetch conversations messages uh, function and it's just going to be called uh, let's see function the function we're creating is going to be called update conversation last view and it's going to take the conversation ID as its parameter and it's just going to set the last view time for that conversation for the current user equal to the current time so as always this needs to be sanitized so I'm just going to copy this down from here because it's quite annoying to type it out so much um, and then we're going to define our SQL variable which is going to be the SQL that we're going to run so the SQL that we want to run is an update I want to update the conversations members table we want to set the last view time so the conversation last view equal to the current time which we can get using the unix timestamp function mysql function okay so we only want to do this at the moment that I do that for everybody which would be pretty terrible we only want to do this for the current user and the specified conversation so we can do where conversation id is equal to the specified conversation id um, conversation ID is that and the user ID is the one stored in the session so session user ID without that plus and with a closing one of those and with a lowercase r okay so that's that query done all you need to now is run it so we're just going to use mysql query on sql and that will hopefully update the table uh, so let's just comment what this does. Um, it um, sets the last view time to the current time for the given conversation. That looks fairly right. So we can test this now, but obviously it needs to be called. So we're going to call this in our um, view conversation page. Um, once we've uh, verified that this is a valid conversation. And now we need to make sure that this is called after we fetch the conversation messages because if we do it beforehand it'll update before we check it for the unread condition. So we need to do that afterwards otherwise it won't work. So all we're going to do is call update conversation um, last is that right? Yeah, last view. And then we pass in the conversation ID which is get conversation um, ID okay so we can do test this now by going back to our browser and hitting reload and we get an undefined variable because I've spelled conversation wrong um, conversation hang on have I? no what? conversation that's right is that right? yes so where's the error? Oh, on line 72 of the back end file. Oh, okay, I think I might know what I've done. Uh, I've spelled it wrong here. Line 72. I've spelled it wrong here. Okay. Right, that should work now. So, one more reload. And there we go. So, that should have now updated the conversation. Because, I know I refreshed it, but this is effectively the first view with our code changes. So let's go back to our uh, database and hit reload on this table. And there we go. We can see that the time has been set to um, what was the current time a few seconds ago. And if I just reload the page again, 
we should see that this goes unbold because the time of this um, message is now less than my last view time. If I just up, uh, refresh this once more, you can see that a little bit has been added to this um, time. So it's maybe not the best way to do things to have the, a query run on every page load because at the moment we've actually got three queries running on every page load for this system because um, in our code, oops, in our view conversation page, we have one that is run by this check here and one that is run here to fetch the messages and another here. So what might be possible is for something like to only update the time if there are actually unread messages, um, which might be a sort of nice workaround for a bit of efficiency. Um, but I'll leave that as something for you to think about because something that I'll have to change in a moment is going to make that quite a lot more complicated. Anyway, so the next thing we need to make is the next feature we need to add, sorry, I should say, is the ability for people to add their own new messages to this conversation. Because at the moment, all we've got is a fairly static messaging system where people can't actually apply without actually creating a whole new conversation. So this is essentially the finishing touches and the final thing we're going to be adding. So what we're going to do is just add the HTML form here first to allow people to enter the data. So we're just going to create a new form. So form. The action is going to be set to empty, which means the current page. The method is going to be post. And we're going to close the tag there. And then inside of here, we're going to have two div tags. Um, so there's one. Almost. Oh dear, I got that completely wrong. Okay, no, okay. And then we want this again for the second thing in the form. So the first one is going to contain a text area, like so, whose name is going to be message. And we're going to set the number of rows equal to 10 and the number of columns equal to 110. Oops, I don't know how I did that. Equal to 110. Um, again, just remember that the text area um, should really be styled with CSS and these just have to be added to keep the code valid. Um, also we need a submit button, so that's what's going to go in this bottom div. So input type of submit um, value is going to be equal to add message. Um, okay. So we can just reload a page to make sure this sort of looks right. So going back to here, hit reload. You can see that this has now been added. Obviously at the moment it doesn't do anything except reload the page. But what we want to do is make this sort of work. So when we type in a message in here and press submit, we want to have this added to the um, list of messages down here. Obviously it will also update for other people. So let's go to our code again and right at the top of the page we're going to check to see here, which is what I mentioned earlier, we're going to check to see if this form has been submitted, which we're going to do by just checking to see if is set post oops messages and if it is we're going to do a bit of validation so just for the sake of this tutorial all we're going to do is check to see if the post message sorry if the message has been uh, given i.e. not an empty string so we're just going to check if empty post message and if it is that is an error condition um, again, I'm going to be using the same method as I did previously, so I could use like else add message. However, I'm going to be leaving this sort of in the same method, um, same style, I should say. So we're going to check if empty errors. Oops. And this will still include this check, by the way. So if this check fails, this will have the invalid conversation ID um, in the errors array. So when we get here, even if they have submitted a valid message, this will still fail because errors are still empty. So actually you do need to use this method. Um, and also, like I said before, it does leave it a bit more open. So say if you want to do a bit more strict validation, like say if you want to try and stop people posting links in their messages, you could add an, a regular expression here. So you could have preg match, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm not going to be doing that for this because I've actually got a separate video planned for it, but um, that's a different story. Anyway, if the message is empty, we're just going to add something to the errors array, which is going to be equal to um, you must enter a message, not specify. Like 
so. So because we've already coded out the code to uh, display these messages, we can actually test this just by going to our page and just enter, empty, entering an empty message. And we don't get any errors, which is odd. Um, we should do. Um, so checking, okay, that should be message, not messages. Reset, no, don't resend. Oh, okay, now it worked. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So you can see that we have this uh, message now output above, um, which may not be the best place actually thinking about it. Um, ideally, it would be under those links, um, but I guess I can leave that as up to you for formatting. Um, but anyway, you can see that the message is being output, the error message is being output correctly and detected correctly. Um, so if I just enter something in here and click again, we'll get no error. Um, we're not actually going to be showing the confirmation message for this because the confirmation message will be the fact that your message appears in this list. Okay, so all you need to do now is code the add uh, message function, which I'm about to code, sorry, about to call. Um, so all we've done here is check to see if the errors array is empty and then done nothing. So what we want to do is, if there have been no errors, we want to add a message to the conversation. So we're going to be doing that using the add conversation message function like so and this is going to take two parameters which is going to be the conversation ID so get conversation ID and the second parameter is going to be the text we want to add as a message and we're going to be getting the user from the um, session okay so that's that done so now the last final step of this uh, tutorial is to add the um, create code to you know have this function essentially um, and there is one more thing that I need to mention um, which I will do um, afterwards after that basically so let's go across to our backend file and we're just going to scroll um, down to where we were dealing with messages so just above delete conversation uh, let's add a function to well that function I just defined or talked about so it's a new function it's going to be called add conversation messages it takes two parameters first one being the conversation ID second one being the text um, and again these well not again as usual these variables need to be sanitized so I'm going to do that just by copying the sanitization, I guess, for the conversation ID. And then I'm going to code out the one for the text. So we're going to set text, not text, not test even, equal to, just tab that across, equal to MySQL real escape string with a lowercase s of HTML entities of text. And again, I explained that before, so I'm not going to go over it at the moment. Okay, so after that, what we need to do is the add the SQL to um, actually insert this to the table, and that's something that I'm going to leave for the next part. Um, so in part 15, um, we're just going to pretty much carry on, um, and I'll talk about the SQL and then a little problem which requires a very awkward workaround. Okay, so thank you for watching, and come back for part 15.